again. Today I will handle organic evolution. And this topic creates a lot of confusion in the society today. But this particular video is to teach you the academic aspect of it. It's not to change your belief. But here I'm going to tell you the theories propounded by recognized scientists and the ones that they ask you in your exams not to affect your belief. Belief is not something that we are discussing and it is not something that can be proved. But here we're going to take a look at evolution as it concerns science. So in this particular tutorial, I'll handle you the definition of evolution, what organic evolution means, the origin of life, the theories that are common, the ones including your special creation, then the common theory of organic evolution by Charles Darwin, then the evolution by uh, Jim Baptist Lamarck, of course, even the isolation theory, then the mutation theory of organic evolution by Hugo de Vries, of course, and the types of evolution, then finally evidence to support organic evolution. So happy watching and endeavor to subscribe if you have not done that. If you have subscribed, please like this video, share this video, expand this science community. I cannot do without you. Much love from me to you, your Majesty. majesty. First, evolution is actually generally standing for the study of origin and the history of life. But when you use the word organic evolution, it's actually the, uh, uh, the type of evolution that is based on the fact that organisms give rise to another organism through the process of gradual changes. Not that species are created separately, Rather, a species can be gotten from an existing species. This opposes special creation. So, remember, your special creation is the one we see in the book of Genesis, where they told us that God created every species separately. But this has been the most common belief on how life came to be. This has been a belief and not actually scientifically proved. And remember that when you cannot prove something, doesn't mean it is not true. But from what we are seeing, the special creation ideology by Genesis, accounted by Genesis, is contradicted by evidence from fossil records. You see, you hear about dinosaurs, from fossil records, fossil remains, proves that organisms can change with time. But this was not recorded. In the Genesis, it's all about that God created every species separately. So organic evolution is trying to tell us that it, it that is a series of gradual changes undergone by living organisms since the beginning of life to give rise to recent day species of plants and animals. So evolution, organic evolution is a gradual process whereby a related species with time becomes separate to give rise to different species. So organic evolution is trying to Explain what I summarize in unity in diversity and diversity in unity. That every living thing, once are related, but with time, due to gradual changes, now become diversified in different forms. So, a kind of telling you that life started in this form, then due to changes, maybe I'm changing my handwriting. Before you know it now, I'm constructing a tree of life branching, giving rise to different species in the world today, three of life, but all started at a point. Not that this species here were created separate and this one were created separate. No. Organic evolution holds that there are gradual changes undergone by life, by the first form of life that produced varieties of living things today. Now, before we continue, sorry, I've not written the topic. We are into evolution and its organic evolution. I've just explained and summarized the special creation that God created everything separately. But organic evolution is saying that species give rise to another species by gradual processes, not that species were created separately. Now, in organic evolution, there has been efforts to explain the source of life, the origin of life. Hi, my name is Cheryl. And I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Star Majesty Easy World Science. And you know the best part? Mm -hmm. It makes science so easy. Wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky Science ain't Rocky Science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you did science in your entire life. 
<laughs> Another thing about Her Majesty Easy Water and Channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents. Guess the best part if chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials. And another thing is when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable for anybody. If you want to order, just look at normal blue screen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below. Don't forget to share, of course, obviously there's love in sharing. Thank, Thank you. you! See you there. <laughs> Remember, organic evolution is views is talking about how life diversified. The problem is now that life form that gave rise to different life forms came from where? That is where they have many, 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 many theories. There are spontaneous generation theory, which has been discredited. Spontaneous generation holds that living things came from dust, dirty, part uh, dirty particles or dust being while decaying, because they discovered that when you pack a dirty, a dirt or rubbish. While the rubbish is decaying, you start seeing maggots and any other form of life. So scientists thought that life came from that waste. And this is not true. Who disproved it? Pastoral sterilization experiment. Today, if you sterilize wastes, there won't be any form of life coming. So which means if you dump a waste, the life that comes there are already existing, not that they are evolving from that waste. The only thing is that the the, 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 the dump is providing the environment necessary for them to grow. It's a growth medium. So that, uh, that spontaneous generation I just mentioned is one of the attempts to explain the origin of life in organic evolution. But that has been discredited. Then, another one that is common is actually the biogenesis. Uh, uh, yes, of course. So the biogenesis is just trying to say that it is a principle that holds that life can only arise from another form of life close to that organism. Any living thing will come from another living thing that is related to it and never from non-living thing. And that's what we call biogenesis. Therefore, there is another one called a, a biogenesis that living organisms can come from non-living organisms. They are organic molecules. They are non-living themselves, but they have the ability to replicate. These ones are the ones they are generally accepting that we first started from organic molecules that are not actually living by themselves, but they have the ability to do what? Replicate. I'm now explaining the origin of life. So in this origin of life, it is an explanation to discuss how the first form of life came to be. And scientists try to tell us that four substances joined, undergo series of changes under electrical lightning and ultraviolet radiation to form such thing like nucleic acid, to form amino acids, and we all know that these are the constituents of the DNA, and DNA have the ability to replicate. And by doing, life now starts graduating. It's a gradual process, according to Charles Darwin, that uh, uh, nature doesn't jump, natural non fact is certain. You don't just start one day and every living thing came out. No, that it is a gradual process. So in the origin of life, the four substances are hydrogen, ammonia, ammonia gas, there are four gases of course, hydrogen gas, then methane, remember there is an organism called methanogenes, they secrete methane, they are one of the earliest form of life, then the methane, sorry, then we have finally the water vapor, Water vapor. So these four substances, I'm explaining on the origin of life. Remember, I'm not talking about what you believe. I'm telling you what this is a possible suggestion to give us the first form of life. And this first form of life start undergoing gradual changes to give rise to the present day species of plants and animal. So the first form of life usually in form of DNA. We all know that DNA have the ability to replicate. So the question is, there must be always some questions that will be unanswered by this. For example, who was there when the hydrogen, ammonia, methane, and water vapor were combining? And they are trying to tell us that this happened about 3,500 to, uh, to 4,000 million years ago. So the idea and the origin of life must remain a mystery whereby you can only solve your own problem by believing whatever you want to believe. 
because Noma was there. Imagine telling a history of what happened when you weren't there. The earth was formed. Fine. This is what we are seeing. But there is a little evidence because the earliest form of life have these factors these people are saying. So this is the form of life. So this is the origin, trying to tell us that these are the things that gave us this. And those non-living things have the ability to replicate. From being replicating, they now start forming smaller life, starting from aquatic now to terrestrial. So this is just the simple explanation to the origin of life, according to organic uh, evolution. Now, let us see the popular evolutionary theories in biology. The most popular is that of Charles Darwin. But he wasn't the first to make attempts of dis disproving spontaneous, uh, disproving a special creation, which is reigning in the world today, that God created us. So the first theory I'm going to take a look at is Lamarck's theory of organic evolution. Jim Baptist, Lamarck theory of organic evolution. Sounds good, right? Yes. Well, think about this. Thank, Thank you. you. See you there. I love you. Thank you for watching.